Hi, and welcome to the Pocatello Art Center video. This is my first time doing this here. I've been on camera before, and uh, we did pay for the damage to the camera and the lens and everything. But right now, we are just going to do a little show, a little demonstration of how to draw a face. I have basically an eraser and a pencil. These are the basics. Uh, you don't need more than that to get started. And uh, of course, if you've got tablets, if you like to draw on tablets, there's lots of different things. You can use any kind of paper to get started. All we're gonna do is talk about some of the structure of the face. We wanna get that and uh, work, work with that and yeah, we'll see how we do. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead, switch the camera and we'll show you the paper we're gonna be working on. I'll be working on a, uh, I believe it's 140 pound, uh, drawing paper. You can work on anything. Go get some, steal some paper out of your computer printer. That works just as well as anything. And uh, we'll see what's going to happen here. Okay. We're going to do faces, front view of the face. And we'll zoom in a little bit here. And uh, hopefully we can get it all nice and in focus for you. And it's going to be a little bit light. I tend to work pretty light when I first start. And I'm going to start with a circle. Now, this is one of many ways. Uh, you'll hear about the Loomis method, which is really popular. Uh, I highly recommend that you check out Proko's Loomis method. Uh, 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 Proko does YouTube videos. And the Loomis method is one of his best, uh, one of his favorite things to use. It's an atelier method. Uh, there are others, and I'll try and remember them as we go. But I'm going to take this method, which is one that I've used for years teaching art to junior high and high schools, and we start with simply a circle. Now, I know that we're not lollipops. We don't have just circle heads and, uh, you know, stuff like that. We're not a lollipop. Our heads are actually elongated somewhat. I'm going to mark this off into thirds. So one, two, three parts. And now I'm going to take that measure of a third and go down one more third and put another mark. That's going to be the chin for our face. Okay. For that chin, I'm going to go straight across here. This one, which is our second hatch mark here, is going to be the eyes. So that's going to be the eye level or just the eyes, not the eye level. Those will be the eyes of our head. This will be the top of our head coming out here. And then this mark I made down here will be the bottom or the chin. So top, eyes, chin, and let's see if I can play with focus here a little bit. And get you out there. All right. And so you can see all of that. Top of the head, eyes, chin, and let's see if I can, yeah, okay. Uh, I didn't know what stages we have on our on our uh, zooming in capabilities, but that gets us where we want to see it. So top, eyes, chin, it's all on there. Now, what I'm going to do now is create an egg shape. And this is something that Mrs. Hansen, clear back when I was a sophomore, had us do, she would draw the, the head, the shape of the head, as an egg. In other words, round here, but then tapering down into more of an oval at the bottom. Halfway down is the eyes, and we're going to take that, we're going to start with that baseline of the eyes. I'm going to divide that into five parts. The best way is to do what I think is going to be approximately the width of an eye right here in the center, and then take that out to the edge and divide that. Out to this edge, divide that. Now I have one, two, three, four, five spaces. Or as I say, five eyes wide. The eyes themselves will go on that baseline right there. And I'm going to just make a really uh, simple almond shape, a little bit flatter on the bottom, a little bit rounder on the top. And as we come through here, the space here in this middle eye 
I'm going to divide that into three parts as well. This will be the bridge of the nose. I'm going to come out from that bridge, and that's where the eyebrows will start. Now, the eyebrows aren't just one single line, okay? And they're not always a curve. Quite often, they, they'll have some curve to them, but usually they're in two parts. The one part that'll start right here, just inside the eye, come out, and then where the forehead starts to curve around the edge, the eyebrow will start to curve down. So you get that as a basic form for the eyebrow. By the way, I want you to notice this very expensive drawing pencil that I have. It costs about 40 cents, but if you can't afford that, there are cheaper ones. Okay, anyway. So really, anything you can draw with, I encourage you to draw with it. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other eyebrow now coming out. Uh, this person has very thick eyebrows, kind of the Ally McGraw of, uh, of uh, basic face proportion dummies. So coming into there. Now, once I've got the eyebrows, that is a very important part because the eyebrow, halfway from it down to the chin, is going to be where the tip of the nose goes. So I can measure with my pencil. When I do this measuring, I'll actually take this and put the tip of my pencil on one point, and I think that's about halfway, so we're going to check it. I'll put my thumb where that is, and then I move it down there, and lo and behold, I magically got lucky. It's right there. So you get to the point where you can actually eyeball these things eventually. But uh, anyway, so that's where the tip of the nose will end up. Now, funny thing about it, we haven't got the mouth yet, and I'm not worried about that too much. But usually, if you go straight down from these edges of the eyes, that's where you'll find the wings of the nose. And then the tip coming like that. And that'll give us the shape of the nose. If you're, you know, Different people have different shapes of the nose. If you've got a broken nose, it could be wider, flatter. Uh, if you've got a really thin nose, it could be, uh, you could make this even more narrow. It just depends on the individual characteristics of the person that you're drawing. But since we're doing just a basic proportion here, then I think that'll, that'll work and give you the idea. Okay. Now, let's see if we can get in a little tighter on that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, another thing about this, knowing where the nose is, where the eyebrows are, if you look, and we'll, we'll, we're going to switch cameras here. Okay. If you check yourself out, take your finger and your thumb and touch the top of your ear and the bottom of your earlobe. Now, what I want you to do is turn your face. The first thing you'll notice is that your finger touches your eyebrow. The second thing you'll notice is that your bottom of your thumb touches the bottom of your nose. So we know from that that I really need a haircut. But uh, we can go from here. Okay. And here we are back to our nice little diagram. We know from that that if I go straight across from the eyebrow, straight across from the nose, that's where our ear is going to be. Now, the problem that we sometimes have is that we're trying to draw a side view of an ear. If we do that, we'll look like he's got big old elephant ears. So you don't want that. What you're looking at is a foreshortened view of the ear, which gives you the ridge of the ear, and then usually a curve, almost like a small butterfly wing coming in. And that's all the more you need for your ear. So don't give them big old elephant ears, unless you're like my friend Clay. We won't talk about Clay, <laughs> though. So, all right. <laughs> okay. Then, okay, so we've got the ear in there. You might see the inside of the ridge. Uh, ears have 
very peculiar and difficult to draw shapes. So uh, usually I just a little shadow like that, and a little shadow like that, and then kind of square it off here a little bit. Otherwise, you'll get Spock ears. So and Spock ears are cool if you're drawing Mr. Spock, but we're not. Now, we come down here, and the eyes, beady little things that they are, the black of the eye is going to be just underneath. Anyway, so the eyes are going to be just underneath the eyelid. Okay, that's because we the body is a, a miraculous machine. As we open... As we uh, open our eyes, the eyelid only opens far enough for us to see out. And if we look down, the eyelid actually closes somewhat. And if you look up, the eyelid will open up even farther for you to look up. So keep in, die, in mind that the pupil is always going to be just a little bit underneath the eyelid. Okay, back to our, our little friend here. Now, the nice thing about the pupil is we've got all that colorful stuff surrounding it. Usually that colorful stuff, and it will be concentric with it, but usually that colorful stuff will be slightly hidden by the upper eyelid. And with, with very few exceptions, that's what you'll find here. There is the one case where somebody might open their eyes in wide surprise, in which the eyelid comes way out. And that gives us a feeling like we're, uh, we just got scared or something. So, but, okay, back to our diagram here and uh, trying to keep this underneath, but I think we'll, we'll be fine time-wise. All right. You'll also, a lot of times, you'll see some shadow under the eyes, uh, puffiness, sometimes wrinkles, depending on the age of the subject matter. And then, knowing the eyes and where the pupils are is important because the mouth is going to be approximately the same width as those two pupils distance. So you go straight down from the pupils and halfway from the nose to the chin, we're gonna put just a little mark there, just a little bit above halfway actually. And then we're gonna create a mark above that, another mark above that or below that. And we're gonna do a bow shape. Okay, the bow shape, I'm gonna go over here a little bit. And of course, a bow is going to, a bow and arrow, the bow is gonna look like this. Okay, and of course with the string across here and then an arrow shooting across there. So what we're doing is creating that bow shape for the lips and a slight bow shape for the, part of the lips, for where the lips part, a more exaggerated curved bow shape for the upper part of the upper lip. And then the bottom of the lip, you can either do a simple curve or a lot of times what I see people do, and this works really well, is that almost a straight line and then curving at the outside edge. Now, you probably noticed that this line doesn't come out as far as that line does, okay? That's because your upper lip actually protrudes above where the lower lip is. And so where you see this going in underneath, your lower lip isn't going to be as wide as your upper lip is. 
and get rid of all those arrows. Looks like he's got tattoos. Okay, here we go. Maybe I should have arrows tattooed onto my face so I can just demonstrate that real easy. <laughs> so, okay. Oh man, I should have studied up a little bit. There's a name for this little indenture here. Anyone know it? Okay. <laughs> And then we have this little line, which is the top of the chin. Okay. If you look at this from the side view, it almost looks like a stair step. Now, I'm also going to take the jawline here. I'm going to extend this out a little bit, and I'm going to do one flat edge there. And then I'm going to create a corner straight across from the lips. That is the corner of the jaw. The cheek, of course, would be out to here. And then it kind of comes inward for the hairline. Okay. I guess probably should have two ears. After all, this isn't a self-portrait. So. And so hairline will come inward from here and inward from here. And let's zoom out a little bit. There. And I think we must be a little bit of an angle because it doesn't look quite as distorted on the paper as it does on the camera here. But then we do the hairline across here and we've got our basic head shape. Now, this is the top of the head, but usually hair piles up a little bit on top. So I'm going to go up a little bit higher with the hairline. Maybe he's got a, I don't know what kind of hairstyle he's got. Or she. In fact, yeah, we'll play with that a little bit too in just a second. But first, uh, there also will be a lot of times a little bit of an indenture on the forehead. And that just depends on the lighting that you have, whether you see that or not. That's also where we get our little worry lines, our little wrinkles quite often as we get older. But we're going to keep this guy kind of young to start with. Now, from here, let's drop down to the neck. This is an interesting thing because an average neck, if you go halfway from the eye to the ear, put a little mark, and then go straight down, that's your average neck. Eye to ear, halfway, straight down, and there is the neck. The shoulder goes behind the neck because the neck actually comes out forward and it crosses just about where your chin, the top of your chin crosses. So that gives you. Now, your sternomastoid muscles that move the neck around, they work in from here to here. And so a lot of times they'll create some shadows and that will give us some idea of the muscularity of the figure. Now let's play with this a little bit. I'm going to take that neck muscle and we're going to drop straight down from the corner of the eye. So instead of coming from here straight down, I'm going to go to here, go straight down, and drop the neck muscle down there. This gives us what we call an ectomorph body type. This ectomorph body type is basically that skinny person that you wish you looked like all your life, right? Okay, so very thin, uh, still probably a little bit of the, the sternomastoid uh, musculature going on. Uh, maybe a little bit more Adam's apple showing up, things like that. But this is that skinny person. So if you ask somebody, it's very thin. It also is the way you want to do it if you're doing a child. So if you're drawing a child, you want to keep that neck that thin. Now, you have to be careful because if you go thinner than that, then you're entering under unrealistic proportions. 
there is a limit to what you can get away with as far as that goes. Uh, and if you're doing cartoons, that's fine. But now let's go the other direction. We went from the inside of the eye down to get our thin person. Let's do an endomorph, which means we're going to go clear out here and drop the neck down from the ear. As soon as you do that, you've got Paul Bunyan. You've got a massive bodybuilder, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, you know, whatever you want to compare them to. Yeah, you've got that super muscular body type there. Okay. So that's what happens when you drop a clear out here. So if you're drawing superheroes, this is a good thing to know. But we can also take that one step further by erasing the jawline, leaving the chin, and bringing this around as more of a curve instead of a straight line. Then we have what happens if you have a little too much weight. Okay. So then we kind of get that double chin. Maybe you've got. Uh, I, sorry, Dad, to tell everybody about this, but we, we called it his gobbler. He always had a little extra skin loose around there. But, and you might have some jowls. Well, I like that. So then you have another body type. So all of that, you've got four or five different body types just based on how you draw the neck. So it's just kind of an interesting aspect to the face. But we're going to go back to our average person. Because most of us are average. Or at least sort of average. Now the jawline is an interesting thing too. Because if you take it and make it really angular, it tends to look more masculine. If instead you make it more graceful, and it tends to look a little more feminine. And I, I believe that's more or less a, uh, or more childlike too, for that matter. Straight down from there, your average. Okay. And that will have anything, you can, all sorts of different things you can add to it at this point. But we've got our basic face here. We've got the basic uh, structure of the face. And, uh, oh, let's deal with the hair just a little bit before I close out here. This, by the way, is the front view. Okay. And we'll, we'll work in special effects later on. Right? Right, ladies? Right. <laughs> okay. But uh, this is the front view of the face. We'll work in the profile at another time. But this works for the front view. Now, the hairline, we started this, and I started talking about that. There are different, of course, different aspects of the hairline that we can do. Uh, you can do the uh, Widow's Peak hairline, which comes up comes down to a point and even the widow's peak depending on how you comb it a lot of times people will comb this back but with longer hair that might come down with bangs if you do have bangs, kind of give yourself a little mark of where you want them to come down to. And, and you can have them combed to one side, or you can do the full bang all the way in the front. ladies for more effeminate features. Uh, emphasizing the eyes is a good way to
create a little more feminine look to it. And get the tweezers out and pluck those eyebrows a little bit. And then work the hair. Work the hair into groups of hairs too. Don't try and draw individual hairs. Think of it as three different sections. The front section, left section, right section. And as you come down on the sides, it'll come down and then as it hits the shoulders, it'll usually poof out somewhat. Or you could have hair that comes and is basically teased inward, like so. Or you could have it actually Doris Day style, teased outward, like so. And so lots of different styles. Hair is all a personal choice. Whether it covers the ear like it does here, or maybe there's a something holding it back. Hair band. So we have two different things going on here. And of course we could do my favorite, which is the mullet. We won't do that right now though. <laughs> Anyway, that'll give us some ideas of some of the things that you can do with the face. Hopefully, you can take something away from this and use it in your own drawings. And uh, anyway, all right. See you guys later. All right. Take care. It's alive. <laughs>